All right, in this video, we're going to talk about um, integration using trigonometric substitutions. And trigonometric substitutions, unfortunately, is one of those techniques that, even for the easier problems, can be pretty tedious. So it's just the nature of the beast here. And basically, integration, or excuse me, trigonometric substitution is used when you have a root floating around. And the roots are of the form a, where a is a number, so a squared minus x squared, we'll use a particular substitution. If it's a squared plus x squared, we'll use a particular substitution. And if it's square root of x squared minus a squared, we'll also use a different substitution. So let's do one, and I'm going to do two examples. The first one I'll do is an indefinite integral, so we won't worry about the bounds on theta just yet. So let's start off with one here. So the first example I'm going to take will be, we'll integrate x cubed divided by the square root of x squared plus 9. So I go back to my little sheet and I see, okay, a variable squared plus a number squared. That means we'll use this identity. So the number being squared is 3, so that means the substitution I'm going to use is going to be x equals 3 tangent of theta. Okay. Well, now I know what x is. I also have to calculate dx. So dx, recall if x is 3 tangent theta, I'll get 3 secant squared of theta d theta and that's what I'm going to plug into my integral here so I'm going to rewrite all this stuff I'm going to have x which is 3 tangent theta all cubed so I'm plugging in that x is 3 tangent theta this is all going to be divided by well, 3 tangent theta squared. That's what I'm, again, I'm plugging in for x. Then I still have my plus 9 hanging out over here. And from there, I just need to simplify this integral down a little bit. So 3, excuse me, 3 cubed is going to be, I'm just even going to leave it alone. 3 cubed, I'm lazy, tangent cubed of theta. Oh, and you can already see I left something out here. I didn't plug in my dx. We'll catch that at the next step. Definitely something you gotta do though, or you will have major, major problems. And I was always notorious for forgetting to do this, as you can see. So 3 squared is going to be 9. Tangent squared theta plus 9. Let's plug in our dx term that we forgot to a second ago, or that I forgot to. You'll have 3 secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so I'm just plugging in all the information that I have and just trying to simplify it down a little bit. So I've got 3 cubed, I've got another 3, that'll give me 3 to the fourth tangent cubed theta secant squared theta d theta and now the idea is on the bottom I could factor the 9 out and this is why you pick the substitution in such a way so that the coefficients are going to be the same you can factor the 9 out and have tangent squared theta plus 1 left over another piece of paper here all right sorry about that so now let's keep simplifying this down a little bit more Again, nothing major that we're doing yet. We're just simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. 
Okay, so at this point, again, I'm not doing much of anything on the top. 3 to the 4th, I've got tangent cubed of theta, secant squared theta, d theta. Now on the bottom, this is where the simplification occurs. So I can pull the 3 outside of the square root, or excuse me, I can pull the 9 outside of the square root as a 3. And then underneath the radical, I can use this substitution again that 1 plus tangent squared of theta equals secant squared of theta. So this is where the identity comes into it. So I'm going to replace the 1 plus tangent squared theta with secant squared theta. And a couple things to notice here. This is one reason why I wasn't multiplying out the 3's because definitely something's going to cancel out here. And I've got 3 to the 4th on top, 3 to the 1st. I'll be left with 3 to the 3rd. And I'm just going to pull that outside. I've still got tangent cubed theta secant squared theta just hanging out on top and if you take the square root of something squared you just get what's underneath the square root so just plain old secant theta d theta left over and this is really the point of the whole problem is the fact that the um, the substitution will get rid of the square root and that's definitely a nice thing to have. So let's rewrite this a little bit more. So notice now I can cancel the secant theta out on the bottom with the one of the secant thetas on the top. So I'll be left with tangent cubed theta secant theta d theta. Okay, so we've turned one integration problem into this new integration problem and now the question is what do we do you know why is this so much better for us does this actually help can we integrate this thing well this is something known as a trigonometric integral and we'll talk about those on another video as well so trigonometric substitution definitely ties into what are known as trigonometric integrals so you'll want to be pretty good at trigonometric integrals um, to really have a shot at some of the trigonometric substitution problems. But there's a rule that says if you have tangents and secants being multiplied, you can save a factor of secant, excuse me, of tangent. So I'm going to bust this up as tangent squared theta, and then I'm going to rewrite it. So I've still got a tangent theta floating around. So there's my secant theta, and I'll put my tangent theta over here to the side. And the idea is now that you can use a trig identity yet one more time. Recall that tangent squared theta is secant squared theta minus 1. So here comes secant squared theta minus 1 in place of my tangent squared theta. I still have secant of theta, tangent of theta, d theta just chilling out over there and now the idea is I can use a u substitution and what substitution should I use here exactly well I don't think I would want it to be the entire inside here but notice if I let u just be plain old secant theta the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta d theta. So I can now rewrite my integral using this stuff. So it says I'm going to get u squared minus 1 du. So we're definitely turning it from one integral into another integral that hopefully we know what to do with into yet another integral that hopefully we can deal with. And certainly the last one's not too bad, especially after all this stuff. So if we integrate this last part, we'll get u cubed over 3 minus u plus c. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute. 
I'll get u cubed minus 3u plus c and this is where we're now going to have to start backtracking a little bit and plugging everything back in that we need oh I made another little typo sorry this should be 3 cubed 3 cubed easy to make little mistakes on these as you can see me doing a couple times in this problem so let's just scratch that out so 3 cubed is 27 divided by 3 I'll get just 9 u cubed and I'll get 27 times u plus c sorry for the little mistakes there but as you can see certainly everybody makes them so where's my u okay so u now in this case is secant of theta so I'm gonna plug that back in I'll get 9 secant of theta cubed minus 27 secant of theta plus c so again I'm just plugging in my original u substitution that helped me out from before and unfortunately we're still not done yet because my original problem dealt with with x's and I've now turned the problem into one involving thetas and that's not what I want at all so again it comes back to our substitution and again our original substitution was x equals 3 tangent theta so now I'm going to use that so x is 3 tangent theta we can rewrite this as x divided by 3 equals tangent of theta and now the trick is we use a right triangle to help us simplify this down a little bit more so here's theta remember tangent in terms of a right triangle is opposite over the adjacent and you can then use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side so the missing side will be the square root of x squared plus 3 squared so we'll get x squared plus 9 which hey that was a coincidence because that was the radical that we started off with or maybe it wasn't such a coincidence I'll let you think about that one and recall